Hi guys, I'm Rachel. I'm 24 years old and I've been married for exactly two years and today we're doing a wife talk. I've seen Sarah Therese do these many times in the past and I recently watched Michelle Reed's wife talk and I just got inspired to make my own and ask you guys questions that you want me to answer regarding weddings, marriage, Christianity, all of the above. As a reminder, I am a Christian. I do believe in the Bible, so my answers will be coming mostly from that perspective and it's totally okay if you don't agree with some of the things I say. We all have our own opinions and this is just just me sharing my heart to you guys. So first I'm going to answer some questions about the wedding, my wedding, things that I chose, decisions that I made, and then we'll move on to the juicier stuff about intimacy, romance, and conflict. Ooh, my hair is looking good. <laughs> so really quickly, we got married on September 21st, 2019. This is me trying to remember the date. We got married at the Hotel Colonnade in Coral Gables in here in South Florida and it was so freaking beautiful. I went for a very minimalistic vibe. My wedding dress was really really simple and just like clean and modern and same thing with the flowers. I just wanted whites and neutrals. Super fun wedding. I got a lot of questions about is there anything you regretted doing? I didn't have a videographer. It was too expensive for me at the time. They wanted like $2,000 for the video and I was like, there's no way. Um, but I do regret not hiring a videographer because obviously we won't have that video to look back on. But overall, an amazing wedding and I'm so grateful that everything happened the way that it did. And fun fact, I cried all the way down the aisle. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> I couldn't keep it together. I was just so emotional and as soon as I walked down the aisle and I was like, wow, I'm getting married. I saw AJ down there and I just started bawling. What do you think is the perfect age or the best age to get married? And this one is different for everybody. I got married at the age of 22 and a lot of people think that's really young, but I personally don't think that's very young. I was ready. We met in high school, so we've already known each other for five years at that point. And so we were definitely ready. We do believe that saving yourself for marriage is the most ideal way to start your marriage with that purity in mind. So we did not live together before we got married. I lived with my parents, he lived with his parents. When we got married, we moved in together and started that part of our life. So at that point we were ready because the only other alternative was to keep living with our parents and not start our life together. So we were so ready to do that and it worked out really well and everything went really smoothly. As far as the perfect age, don't let anyone tell you what the perfect age is. Like literally do not care what people think besides your parents and like your close friends and family. Yeah, there's literally no perfect age. Obviously, I hope that you're at least 18 so that you can make that decision for yourself. I do think that you should wait at least two years since you met the person so that you know what they're like, how they deal with stress and conflict and ups and downs in their life. I feel like at least two years of knowing the person is a good guideline. A lot of questions on the transition from living with our parents to all of a sudden living together and what is that transition like? Um, it's amazing. It's similar to the feeling if you've ever gone away for college and you went out on your own, you lived in a dorm or you got an apartment and you had roommates. It's a similar feeling of blossoming into your own person. You get to cook what you want, do what you want, clean when you want. Living with my parents was totally fine and like they're really chill. And like that wasn't an issue, but even if your parents are great, it's still an amazing feeling to go out on your own and be your own person. So that was really fun. Somebody asked, how do you divvy up house chores? Does he complain when he washes your dishes? This is a great question because it has many points. So number one, how do you divvy up the house chores? Definitely talk about which chores you don't mind doing and which chores you hate doing. So I hate taking out the trash. AJ doesn't mind, so we kind of do it that way. Does he complain when he does your dishes? This is great. That word your, so it's like my dishes versus his dishes. You can't think like that in marriage, at least not in my perspective. When you get married, you become one under God and it's no longer me versus him or my stuff versus his stuff. 
everything is one you gotta you gotta get out of that mentality of your dishes his stuff i've found that i've been so much more at peace when i stop thinking that way and serve my husband and he needs to serve me we both are called to serve each other and not live for ourselves so the question the answer is no aj doesn't complain when he does my dishes because that's just like the agreement that we have right so he does the dishes and i do xyz i don't complain when i do his laundry so he's not going to complain when he does my dishes capiche has aj ever hurt your feelings and how did you talk to him about it okay absolutely we hurt each other's feelings all the time we're humans that is normal again communication is key what i really like to do is our weekly devotional which we've been slacking on but we've just recently started doing it again i'll put the book right here this is the one we're doing we do it once a week and it's a couple's devotional and let me tell you guys the weeks where we do this are game changing because it gives me an opportunity to share what's on my mind, what's on my heart. If he's hurt my feelings, this is when I tell him. If I've hurt his feelings, this is when he tells me. So we have a set time where we know we can be open with no judgment and no criticism. This is our time with each other and with God and we just spill it out on the table and that's so healthy to just tell your partner how you're feeling. Most likely your partner's a good person and they don't want to hurt your feelings so that will prompt them to work on themselves and then they're going to tell you how you hurt them and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's not just he hurts me. It's important to realize that it goes both ways and I need to work on being a better wife as well. Okay, what does it mean to be a good and godly wife? So I think that this applies whether you're a Christian or not. I think these values can help any sort of relationship. So in the Bible, women are called to respect their husbands and men are called to love their wives the same way that Christ loves the church. So what does that really mean? Does it mean that we have to obey our husbands in every single decision and that we have no say and no rights and it's just his way or the highway? No, absolutely not. Because if your husband is doing his job to love you the way Jesus loves us, then he is supposed to listen to your requests, listen to your advice, and listen to what you have to say. So it's this harmonious relationship that if both parties are doing their part, it is glorious and it is perfect. But of course, we're not perfect. Humans are never perfect. We are terrible. <laughs> so we both need to constantly be working on our part. As a husband, his job is to lead me and our future children in the way of the Lord. And so if he's doing his job properly, my job of submitting and respecting him as a man and as my husband and as a leader is so easy. But if he's not doing his part, my part is going to be really hard because how can I respect someone who's rude and who doesn't love me and who doesn't honor God with his thoughts and actions? As society, women are always like, oh, I don't have to respect my husband. Like, why should I have to submit to him? There's an even bigger responsibility on the man that isn't talked about. The man has the biggest job and that is to be in communion with God and to lead his family and his wife in that way. If you are a man watching this and you are not loving your wife the way Christ loves the church, don't be surprised if she doesn't feel like respecting you. So yeah, that's my view on that. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but again, the important thing to remember is that it goes both ways. Along the same lines of conflict, who says sorry first when you have a fight? 100% AJ, he is such a loving and gentle man and he is the quickest to say I'm sorry even if it's my fault and that's just an example of what a godly husband should be. I'm not saying that he always has to apologize first because I can totally do that sometimes but that makes it easy for me to respect him and to submit to him because it's like I can see that he is a godly man and he's not trying to trick me. He's not trying to ruin my life. So when you when you see a godly man, it makes it so easy to submit to them. And this is another good point. Sorry, I keep touching my hair. I need to get it dyed. Dyed? What is this? <laughs> I need to get it redone soon. So I'm like constantly 
touching it, but what are some non-conventional ways you let him know that you love him? I mean, not just saying the words. So this is important because everybody has a different love language. I'm sure you guys have heard of these before, but my love language is primarily acts of service, which is why I love it when he does the dishes. I, he cleaned my car the other week and that is what I love. For him, it's quality time. So going out on the weekends, watching TV together, um, anything like that. So it's important to recognize what your partner's love language is and do your best to show them love in the way they want to be loved. And hopefully they do the same for you. How do you handle your finances, separate accounts, or joint? So we actually joined our finances shortly after we got engaged. Again, we've known each other for five years at that time, so it was not, there was no hesitancy, there was no trust issues. We already had talked about all of those things. So we got a joint account together. We still have our separate accounts that we had before we were married, but we transferred a majority of the money to our joint account once we did get married or once we got engaged because we had to start paying for the wedding stuff. Um, my parents did pay for a majority of the wedding, which was a blessing, um, thank you guys. But we did have to pay for little things here and there. And we were also remodeling the house that we're in now. So we had a lot of housing expenses and remodeling expenses that we, it was just easier if we had one account. So let me back up a little bit. We both graduated in 2018 and immediately started working full-time jobs. We had lived at home for one entire year before we got married. I think it was actually like almost a year and a half, two years. So we had almost two years of full double incomes to pay for the house, pay for the remodeling, and save up some money to be financially independent from our parents. Once we got engaged, we funneled our paychecks to go to our joint account and we paid everything through there. If I wanted to go to Starbucks, I paid it from there. If he wanted to buy some shoes, he paid it from there. Like. We knew that we were becoming one and that we weren't going to be independent parties. So we had no issues just merging everything together. And I know there's a lot of different opinions on this about losing your independence. I guess it just depends what you believe in. So again, I believe that you become one with your partner. He's your partner for life and you should not get divorced. So all of my eggs are in this basket. And I think if you think that way, when you do have those big, conflicts you're more likely to work them out than to say you know what i'm just gonna leave i don't have any strings attached um we have separate accounts i can leave whenever i want no when you tie things together you're more likely to work on things and not think about your exit plan that being said there's nothing wrong with having separate accounts like everybody do what you want to do that is fine i know some people who are christians and married and they do have separate accounts and that works for them maybe one spouse is super tight and, and stingy with money and maybe the other spouse doesn't like to be controlled and like doesn't like being questioned when they spend five dollars you know what i mean so everybody's different and there's no right way or wrong way this is just how we prefer to do it would you apologize even if it wasn't your mistake just to kill a fight? I suck at doing this because I'm so petty, but AJ does this all the time. He will, like I said, he's the first to apologize. I think this is an important thing to do if you are like wanting to be the bigger person and just kill a fight. This is so good. I have done this in the past, especially in college because we were in that fighting stage of a relationship. But yes, I would say to put your pride to the side. It's not about who's right or wrong. If you guys are fighting, you're both losing. If you guys are at peace, you're both winning. It's not who's right, who's wrong. You guys are one unit and it's you and him against the problem. Just remember that. Ooh, here's a good one. Do you ever feel like you missed out on dating around and exploring your options first? It seems to be the norm now. Great question. That is definitely the norm now. And everybody, again, do what you want to do. But I get this question all the time. And my parents actually asked me this since we did meet so young. They were like, don't you want to explore your options and see what else is out there? And I said, with all due respect, no. <laughs> I have this godly great man in front of me. Why would I give that up just to take a chance and see what else is out there? No, absolutely not. And I think you would know in your heart 
if he's the one. Um, I knew from very early on that he was going to be the one and I have no regrets. Absolutely none. I'm actually so thankful that God gave me him at such a young age because I think that protected me from a lot of the culture in college, going out, sleeping around. Um, again, absolutely no judgment. But I just know that if I did that, I may have developed some regrets later on. So I'm just so thankful that we had each other during that college time to get closer to God, not farther from God, and to just be secure in that idea of knowing that he has my back, I have his back. And I feel like being together during that time sheltered me from a lot of the culture that was going on around me. <clears throat> Does that make sense? I need some water. Okay. Mm. <coughs> Getting juicier and juicier. As we are humans with instincts of polygamy, how to deal with any crush or attractions we feel. So we actually had a sermon on this the other night about lust and how to control it and what to do when you feel feelings of lust. Obviously I believe in monogamy. I mean, I hope AJ believes the same thing. <laughs> But I do think that with the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us that we have the ability to say no to temptation. I've struggled with lust before. Everyone has struggled with it at some point or another. But the idea is what do you do when you feel that feeling? Do you continue to pursue it and be proactive and search after that temptation? Or do you see something and think, oh my goodness, I'm going to run away. The Bible calls us to run from temptation and so that's what I believe and I believe that through God we can do that. So no, I don't think that it's like doomed, that every marriage is doomed to have somebody cheating on someone else or having affairs. It's more than possible to avoid that and if you're strong in your faith and your relationship with each other and you both have the same values, you can easily say no to that. And that's not to say that there won't be mistakes. I know a lot of couples who have overcome huge mistakes, whether one partner made it or the other. Um, it's all about forgiveness and repentance and making sure that that doesn't happen again. But again, I do think it's possible to avoid that scenario altogether. How do you reject your husband's sexual requests when you're not in the mood? How do you keep things spicy? What do you do when you're not in the mood? A bunch of questions about intimacy. Those are all good questions. Um, Usually there's one partner who's more into it than another partner. I think the key here is again, communicate right off the bat and say, this is what I imagine, this is what I imagine, this is what I want, this is what I want, how often I want it, blah, blah, blah. Talk about that right off the bat. And then try to accommodate the other person's requests. One person wants it every single day, the other person only wants it twice a week. Meet somewhere in the middle and compromise. Marriage is all about compromise, right? And intimacy is no exception. Try to accommodate your partner's request, um, even if you're not in the mood. I know a lot of times I'm not in the mood. As women, it's this is just science, it's not just me, and I know you guys can relate. Oftentimes, it just requires a little bit of preparation. So as men, men, you need to prepare your woman. You need to groom them. You need to text them throughout the day. You need to get them ready. And women, if you're not getting that from your partner, just tell them and say, hey, I would be so much more ready if you did X, Y, Z. And they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, why don't you tell me sooner? Like they're gonna be willing to work with you. Um, so definitely communicate and try to accommodate your partner's needs if you can, if it's not gonna cause an emotional burden to you, of course, say no whenever you want. It's your body, but at the same time, be considerate of the other person's needs and just keep in mind what they told you when you first got married. If they told you that they want it, I don't know, this is, I don't know, every single day and you're only giving it to them once a month, maybe there's something that needs to be worked on there. So just keep in mind where your partner's at and check in with each other um, how to keep things spicy. I think the key here is that both of you need to be pure besides when you're with each other. So... Like women, we struggle with this too. Do not watch pornography. Do not look at images. Do not let your mind wander to those fantasies where you see everything in a perfect light and everything looks perfect. And you're gonna expect that from your partner and you're gonna expect those exotic things and that kills uh, intimacy. So I would, I would just flat out say, stop watching those. 
Tell your husband to stop. Uh, if he is, I don't know. Keep your minds pure. Keep your minds only on each other and that will prevent you from having that lackluster experience. I hope that makes sense. It's like going to Disney World every day for a year and then all of a sudden you're going to your local playground. It's like if you didn't know that Disney existed, you would be happy with your playground and that's super important. And some people may not like me saying that, but that's my opinion and I think that that will greatly bless your marriage. And usually when I'm not in the mood, it's for a reason. Now that I think about it, it's usually because I'm mad at him for something. Even if it's something silly, like he didn't text me good morning or something silly. As women, we often let that build up inside of our minds and we resent him until he apologizes or until he does something nice again. Think about why you're not in the mood. Is it something he did? Is it something he said? Is it something work-related? Maybe if you just talk to him about your work stress, Try to think and say, why am I not in the mood? How can I become in the mood? Do some self analysis to see what makes you happy? What makes you in the mood? What makes you not in the mood? Is it something he does or something he's smelling like? Like if he just had garlic and he's like, hey, you, are you in the mood? And maybe you're just like, no, I, I just don't like the smell of garlic. Like think, don't just say, no, I have a headache. You know, just think about it and communicate about it. And I feel like that will help. <sighs> Do you ever feel bad about choosing hanging out with your friends over hanging out with your husband? I actually did this yesterday. I hung out with my friends for like six hours. I think that's healthy. Um, obviously, you have to keep in mind a balance, but I think it's healthy for both people to have friends and to hang out with their friends independently of their spouse because absence makes the heart grow fonder. It's like when someone goes off to a business trip and then they come home, it's like, wow, I missed you. And you have that realization of how much you love them and how much they mean to you. So definitely do things separately. I think that's so healthy. Pursue your own hobbies, your own passions, and then when you come together again, you're going to be so much more refreshed and ready to connect. Do you consider yourself to be in an interracial relationship? Any struggles with that? Yes, we are. I mean, it's 100% interracial. He, AJ is Filipino and I am, my parents are both Romanian, so I'm Romanian by blood, but I was born in the US. I mean, so is he. So yes, we are interracial. No, we haven't had struggles with that. It's definitely unusual to marry outside of your culture. So Romanians typically marry Romanians or as far as Americans. Um, I can't speak for what they thought, but I could tell in some situations that it was unusual for them to see us together. But other than that, like this is America, everybody dates whoever they want and there's no judgment. We've never experienced any sort of hate or anything like that. Um, any problems with in-laws? We have different we have different cultures and we can't connect. This I know is a struggle for a lot of people. Fortunately for us, it's not a struggle that we have. AJ's family is super chill and like they're so welcoming and we've never had that issue. Um, my parents are the same way. You guys know AJ worked for my dad for many years, so that was like great. Um, and I think Michelle said this in her video too. Um, I think she said blood confronts blood. So if I'm a woman and I'm having problems with my husband's mom, I need to talk to my husband and my husband needs to talk to his mom. That's the order of operations. And if that's not working, um, I would suggest going to counseling and digging deeper and saying, okay, my husband is still not communicating with his mom the things that I'm struggling with. At that point, you need to go to counseling and say, why is my husband uh, failing to do this? Is there something deeper that he's holding on to or, or what the case may be? How should my soon to be husband and I split household responsibilities? First of all, congratulations on getting married soon. That's amazing. You guys know recently AJ stopped working in person. Now he works from home and he's in school. And so he's home almost every single day that's been a transition for us because we both used to be working in the office and we would come home i would cook he would clean after i cooked and so everything was pretty 50 50. but now since he's home he's been taking on more of the household stuff just because it makes sense so i would say analyze who has more time at home and split it up like that. It does not have to be 50-50. I think that's the biggest lie that society is telling us right now is that it has to be 50-50, otherwise there's inequality. 
That is not the case, you guys. Whether the woman is home or the man is home, whoever is home and has more time should step up more and should be doing more of the tasks. So for example, now AJ has taken over the cooking because I still go to work and he's home. He doesn't have the commute time. He gets to use his lunch break however he wants. He has time here and there to do stuff, to throw in a load of laundry, to clean the kitchen. So he does more of the stuff and it's like 70, 30 now. And that is what works for us at the moment. So make sure that you do what's right for you. Don't let people tell you what to do. Don't let society tell you what to do. Um, if you're a woman and you wanna be a housewife, good for you. If you're a man and you wanna cook for your wife because she works eight to five and hates cooking, good for you. Do what works for your relationship. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that I didn't offend anybody. Again, these are just my opinions. You are free to do whatever you want to do and I respect everybody. I do not judge you if you don't live the way I live. We all have free will and we all should do what we want to do with our bodies, with our minds, with our souls, with each other and with our families. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe down below. If you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can hit the bell icon and you can also follow me on Instagram if you wanna see some pictures of my face and some other pictures of my activities. Comment down below if you agreed or disagreed with any of my points, this is a safe space. We can talk, we can discuss, we can debate and there's no room for hatred. There's no room for judgment. Be nice, just be nice. Bye.